Start again. Good morning and welcome to Rosalind Hill Chapel, a spiritual home for open minds. I'm James Chirian Kandit, an elder of the chapel and your worship assistant for this Unitarian service. Whoever you are and however you are this morning, there is a space for you here. Whatever your race, gender, sexuality, class, age, physical and mental capability, we welcome you in the spirit of love. During the service, there is a children's chapel and creche called Bright Lights for children aged two and above. Babies under two are welcome in the creche but need to be accompanied by an adult. Children will leave the main service after the time for all ages. Please join us after the service for refreshments in the side aisle. If you're watching at home, you can enjoy conversation in the virtual side aisle via Zoom. Just click the link in the service YouTube description to find it. We have a busy day here at the chapel and you're all welcome for any of the following events. At 12.30, we have our community turbal lunch, a monthly low-cost meal in Roslyn Hall by the chapel that offers a chance to socialize with others from the community. At 2, join us for a mantra meditation journey, an opportunity for chanting and reflection led by chapel member Stefan Hein and others. At 6 p.m., we ha have our 30-minute mindfulness meditation. And at 7, we offer a labyrinth walk, a time of quiet reflection as you walk a replica of the labyrinth from the floor of Chartres Cathedral. This week, we begin the eight-session course entitled Soul Deep, Exploring Spirituality Together, based on a book that has just been released by our own Reverend Kate Dean and Reverend uh, Michael Allered from Golders Green Unitarians. The sessions will lead us to explore a spiritual approach to life through writing, meditation, and sharing. It will take place on Tuesdays, beginning the 16th, uh, at Golders Green Unitarians in Hoop Lane, led by Reverend Michael. You can see our website for more details and information on how to register. Our ministry assistant, Adam Slate, who will be leading today's service, will lead an online version of this course beginning in early May. I would also like to mention the uh, Haklo Summer School, which takes place from the 19th to 26th of August at the Unitarian Nightingale Center. Uh, and that, uh, the, it has, uh, the theme this year is Sustainable Living, Changing Our Ways and Saving Our World. There's information in leaflets, but I'm not sure if there are any left in the chapel itself, but the, if there are, they will be on this, uh, by the entrance. Uh, but information is also available uh, on the website. The, this is the final week for registration for the summer school in August. So uh, if you want to take uh, advantage of this, uh, uh, please check it out on your websites. Other announcements are in your service sheet and also on our website where you can subscribe to receive our weekly updates or other email lists. We'll take up this morning's collection during the postlude music. This month, we are splitting the collection between the upkeep of the chapel and this month's good cause, 
support after murder and manslaughter, Sam. As the stewards move through the sanctuary, uh, you will have an opportunity to give either by cash or by card. Uh, I'll now hand over to our ser service leader for this morning, Adam. morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Adam Slate, ministry assistant here at Roslyn Hill Chapel, and I add my welcome to James's. We'll now light our chalice as the symbol of our free and questioning faith. We'll now get some matches so we can light our chapel. I mean, light our chalice. Okay, we will now light our chalice as our symbol of our free and questioning faith. As we light this chalice flame this morning, the match needs the matchbox to ignite. The flame needs the wick. The wick needs the wax. And so it is with us humans. Nobody goes it alone. We depend on each other in countless ways. We are all connected. I will also light a second candle as a prayer for peace and an end to the military conflicts taking place in Gaza, in the Ukraine, the Sudan, uh, elsewhere in the Middle East and around the world. This is a special morning in a couple of ways. You've probably noticed the chairs are arranged a little bit differently uh, for some discussion that we'll have um, later in the service. It's a particularly special morning in that we are celebrating officially on the 17th, so three days from now, but this is the closest Sunday, the 250th anniversary of the birth of Unitarianism in England. On the 17th of April, 1774, the Reverend Theophilus Lindsay organized the first Unitarian service at Essex Church in London. You may recognize Reverend Lindsay's name in that our Unitarian publishing house is called Lindsay Press. The service that morning was attended by about 200 people, including Joseph Priestley, who helped found the church, and Benjamin Franklin from the United States. At that time, Unitarian was technically still illegal in England and would continue to be so for another 40 years. Essex Church eventually moved and the Kensington Unitarians still meet there and are celebrating today as well. The building on Essex Street where that first service took place is still owned by the Unitarians and operates as our national headquarters. So. Happy anniversary to us. And now we'll take a moment to greet each other. Um, please turn to someone near you and very briefly, because we have a full service this morning, say your name, welcome each other to chapel, and I will call our attention back in just a few minutes.
All right. I forgot my chimes this morning, so I'm going to call you back with my voice. Um, let's get going with some singing. Uh, we're going to start with hymn number 62 in your purple hymnals. Um, here we have gathered, and John will play it through once so we can become uh, familiar with the melody for people who don't know it, and then we'll rise and sing together. Uh, it's now time for our story for all ages. So who wants to come up and sit down here? There is no age limit. people hear me? Can you hear me in the back? All right. So this um, story is about an anthropologist. And do you all, do you all know what an anthropologist is? Yeah. So an anthropologist is a scientist who studies people and the way people live. So they'll um, kind of live with a group, a uh, culture for a while, and, and spend time with them to learn what's unique about that culture. So this anthropologist 
was living with a tribe and learning their customs and habits. And when she was finished, she had to wait for the transportation that would bring her to the airport that would take her back home. She had gotten to know the children of the tribe very well, and as she waited to leave, she decided she would play one more game with them. She had brought a lot of sweets with her, and she put them all in a basket and put them um, under a tree, put the basket under a tree on the other side of a big field. And she made a line on the ground in front of all the kids and explained when she said go, they should all race to the basket. And whoever got to the basket first would get all the treats in the basket. So she said go, and what do you think happened? Yes. That's what she thought was going to happen. But what happened was she said go, and all the kids looked at each other and held hands, and they ran off to the tree as a group. And when they got to the basket, they all shared the sweets with each other. And the anthropologist was surprised, and she asked them why they had gone together so that nobody would win all the sweets. And one of the kids said, how can one of us be happy when all the rest of us are sad? So this story shows, demonstrates an idea from Southern Africa that is known as Ubuntu. And Ubuntu can be translated as I am because we are together. And it means that our lives are connected to each other and everything we do affects everyone else. It teaches us that we need to pay attention to those around us and that we can have a positive influence on each other's lives. So with that, I think some of you are going to be going to Children's Chapel and the rest of us will sing you off. Sound good? All right. I invite you into a time of prayer and meditation. We come together in fellowship each Sunday with hearts full of joy and full of concern. If you are holding someone in your heart this morning, I invite you to say their name aloud in the coming moments of stillness so that we may also hold them in our prayers. Spirit of life and love, God of our hearts, 
give thanks for those who bring us joy. And we pray for the safekeeping of those we hold in concern. For all those names, spoken and unspoken, may they be surrounded by the loving kindness we offer them today. Blessed be. Amen. We're going to sing again. And I'm afraid that I have made some trouble for myself and for you because we're going to sing around. Uh, John and I talked about this in, in advance, and we weren't sure if we were going to sing it straight through or sing it as a round. And we kind of decided based on how many people showed up. So if it was a bigger group, we would try it as a round. So I feel like we're kind of committed to that. Um, so this is a, uh, a hymn called Building Bridges. And um, I think what we'll do is, John, why don't you play it through once and stop and we'll see the expression on people's faces and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make a plan for actually playing it through and singing it. This side of the sanctuary and everyone on this side of the sanctuary will be the second group and we'll jump in halfway through so it's built building bridges between our divisions I reach out to you will you reach out to me and then when they finish that you all start with building bridges um, and then group one will finish all of our voices and all of our visions friends we could make such sweet harmony and we will so we'll sing it one time together and then you all will start the second time through and after we sing it one time together we'll sing it each group will sing it through three times so you'll keep track after the first time that we sing it together sing it three times and then you stop and sing it three times and then you stop and um, as John said, no matter how it goes, it will end somehow. So, uh, but hopefully it'll be wonderful. Uh, and I'll try to guide with some hand gestures and things. So, uh, do you want to play it through again before people yeah. jump in so they know where we're jumping? Thanks.
okay, that was good. Um, I guess I have a confession. I don't know why we sing rounds in church, but I felt like it was fun to try one, so, and it went well enough I could see doing this again. Thanks. Surviving Through Reciprocity by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Scientists are interest, interested in how the marriage of alga and fungus occurs. And so they have tried to identify the factors that induce two species to live as one in a symbiotic relationship known as lichen. But when researchers put the two together in the laboratory and provide them with ideal conditions for both alga and fungus, they gave each other the cold shoulder and proceeded to live separate lives in the same culture dish, like the most platonic of roommates. The scientists were puzzled and began to tinker with the habitat, altering one factor and then another, but still no lichen. It was only when they severely curtailed the resources, when they created harsh and stressful conditions, that the two would turn toward each other and begin to cooperate. Only with severe need did the fungus curl around the alga. Only when the alga was stressed did it welcome the advances. When times are easy and there's plenty to go around, individual species can go it alone. But when conditions are harsh and life is tenuous, it takes a team sworn to reciprocity to keep life going forward. In a world of scarcity, interconnection, and mutual aid become critical for survival. So say the lichens. I share a prayer now from the Unitarian Universalist John Saxon. After the prayer, during the reflective music that follows, feel free to come forward and light a silent candle for a joy uh, or a concern, or you can sit in quiet reflection. Spirit of life, spirit of love and hope, known by many names and in many ways. We give thanks this morning for all of the gifts and blessings of life, for this day, for the beauty and wonder and mystery of life, for our families and friends, for health, for opportunities to learn and love and grow for the love and support of others in times of illness or despair. But we remember too that others here in this room, in this city, and around the world live in poverty, hunger, fear, illness, isolation, violence, and economic security. In the silence of this room and in the silence of our hearts, 
may we hear the call to a wider perspective and a deeper resolve. May we live with greater compassion and care for ourselves, others, and creation. May we touch others, may we touch each other more deeply, hear each other more clearly, and see each other's joys and sorrows as our own. May we strive to be and become more than we are, more loving, more forgiving, more kind, more honest, more open, more connected, more whole. May we heal and be healed. May we face the uncertainties and tragedies of life with hope, faith, and courage, knowing that life is good and that we are not alone. Amen. May it be so.
from the shelter of each other by Catherine Wonders. We live in the shelter of each other. It is difficult some days to be aware of this and believe it to be true. My mind has a million lines of thought about this, how it is uplifting and hopeful, how it is false and impossible, how our shared world requires us to be bound to one another, connected, interdependent. How it sometimes feels as if it is none of those things. I do live in the shelter of others. I live in the shelter of others on many levels. I live in the security of a strong community, nurturing friends, neighbors, co-workers, loving family. I live in the shelter of a community that shares a common bond of respect, tolerance, patience, understanding, conversation, dialogue, valuing education and personal growth. I live in the shelter of the dreams of my ancestors. I live in the shelter of the possibility of change and growth of opportunity. The concept of Ubuntu that was introduced in our story earlier the idea that I am who I am because of who we are together, this awareness of our interdependence, is one that I think has been slow to be embraced by Western cultures. Although we're social creatures by nature, we may not always be comfortable acknowledging the extent to which we need one another, particularly among communities that tend to value a strong sense of individualism, like Unitarians. Yet we rely on people around us for all sorts of things. Companionship, approval, a listening ear, feedback, emotional support. In a few minutes, we're going to break into small groups to talk about things we need from others that we may not be eager to admit all the time. It'll give us a chance to reflect both on what those things are and maybe why it's so hard to acknowledge this basic human need for interdependence. The writers and ecological activists Vandana Shiva and Robin Wall Kimmerer have said that to be alive, to live, means to depend on others, always, whether we like it or not. I think we can have trouble accepting that. We like to think of ourselves as independent. We think, for example, that gardening or farming, growing our own food, is an exercise in self-sufficiency. Yet other people invented the tools that we use. Other people own the garden shops that sell us our supplies. Other people figured out what kind of fertilizers to use. Other people may have brought the seeds that we plant from elsewhere in the world. Similarly, we might admire the fortitude of someone who's been successful in business. We may describe them as self-made. Yet others had a role in that success, have built the roads, the factory, or the internet infrastructure they rely on. 
may have risked making an investment or lending them startup money, have educated them and educated their employees. Nobody does anything by themselves. We are connected with this interdependent web of humanity, regardless of how independent we feel or how alone we may feel. We have never been fully independent. We have never been completely alone. This is particularly true if we're part of a spiritual community like Rosalind Hill Chapel that's here to look after one another. You can always reach out to me or to Reverend Kate. You can reach out to each other. The poet David White says that our great mistake is to act the drama as if we were alone. He calls for us to put down the weight of our aloneness. There's a saying that if you pull a thread here, you'll find it's attached to the rest of the world. So let's take some time to reflect with each other what that means in our lives. How do we rely on others? What are some ways we get support from each other that we don't regularly acknowledge? What are some things we need from others that we haven't gotten, that we haven't gotten simply because we haven't asked for them? So we'll uh, chat in our small groups in your little arc. Um, you can pull the chairs a little bit more around if that's helpful. Um, we'll come back together in close to 10 minutes, maybe a little less than 10 minutes. Um, so because of the time, um, be mindful of maybe giving everybody a chance to at least say a little something. Give everybody maybe, you know, talk for a minute and make sure everyone and goes around before kind of opening it up to um, free conversation. Uh, and, um, and we'll get back together in a bit.
pull their closing thoughts together and uh, bring your chairs forward. You can leave them in disarray if you're comfortable where you are. They don't have to go back in the same place. Uh. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, we're going to sing again. And of course, we're going to sing the song, Lean On Me. Um, the words are in your order of service. And um, John, are, you're not going to play it all the way through yet. No. OK. We'll, we'll figure out where to jump in, I think, with whatever intro John gives us. Um, 
and we'll stand, and then after we're done singing, please remain standing for the closing blessing. The Reverend Eric Wickstrom has written that we are one human family on one fragile planet in one miraculous universe bound by love. Let us always remember our connection to each other and let us see this connection not as a vulnerability but rather as a bond that strengthens us. Blessed be and you may be seated. We'll now take up the morning's collection during the postlude music.
Thank you, John. Thank you to everyone who helped make the service possible this morning, uh, to John Evans, our music director, to our tech crew who has allowed this to go out on, um, uh, on YouTube and kept the mics, mics working. Please join us in the side aisle for some tea, coffee, biscuits, and um, don't forget the community lunch at 1230. Everyone's invited.